Got a beautiful little problem for you today that I saw on a Turkish math Twitter account. You can see the image somewhere over here and I will try to link to it in the description. Great problem for the new year. If we have one over X plus 2022 equals 2022, then what is one over X plus 2023? Very naively, you might immediately assume, well, if one over X plus 2022 was 2022, then perhaps one over X plus 2023 is also 2023. But you should notice we actually run into a problem almost immediately with that reasoning. Typically when we make the denominator of a fraction larger, the value of the fraction actually gets smaller. So I would not expect here to make this denominator one larger and also get a value one larger. But as we'll see, there are actually several weird things going on in this problem. So let's just get into it, solve it and see what happens. What we're going to use for this this is called the reciprocal identity. If we have some a equal to one over b, then one over a also equals b, provided neither a nor b are zero, which is the case here. What that means for us is that we can actually flip this first equation around and say that x plus 2022 is the same thing as one over 2022. At this point, we also wanna take advantage of a special problem solving technique called answer the question asked. We were not asked for x here, and so there's no special reason we have to solve for x. In fact, I think it's gonna be a lot easier if we don't solve for x, but we attempt to solve for the value one over x plus 2023. To do that, let's add one to both sides of this equation. That gives us x plus 2023 equals one and one 2022nd, which it's actually going to be more useful to us in a moment to express as the improper fraction 2023 over 2022. From here, we're going to apply the reciprocal identity once again, and so now we can say one over x plus 2023, that is the reciprocal of this left side here is going to be equal to 2022 over 2023. That is the reciprocal of the right side. And so there you have it, problem solved, one over X plus 2023 equals 2022 over 2023. Except, hold on a second here, one over X plus 2022 was 2022. You're telling me that we can make that number just one larger and the value of the expression drops all the way to something a little bit less than one? That seems really strange. Like, yeah, I know it's supposed to get smaller, but maybe it gets smaller like by one, right? Or maybe it even gets smaller by, I don't know, 99%. It's not gonna drop all the way from 2022 to a little bit less than one, is it? Well, to figure out what's going on here, let's think of this functionally for a moment instead. We could define a function here that's equal to just that left-hand side of the expression, one over x plus 2022. This is what's called a rational function, which can mean a lot of different things, but in this case just means it looks like a ratio. It's got one function in the numerator and one function in the denominator. The thing about rational functions is you always want to be careful to make sure your denominator does not equal zero because of course we're not supposed to divide by zero. In this case that means for sure we do not want to let x equal negative 2022. If we did that the denominator would be zero and we would have a problem. What that looks like on the graph is what we call a vertical asymptote. It almost seems like a barrier between two different curves but it's actually the same curve with a restriction where we can't actually evaluate the function at negative 2022. What's interesting about such barriers is as you get closer and closer to the vertical asymptote, you can see the value of the function starts to change rapidly. That is, yeah, when I'm over here plugging in something like negative 2016 or negative 2018, the value of my function is not changing very much. I mean, I don't know precisely what these are, but they look awfully close, right? On the other hand, as I start to move closer and closer to that barrier, smaller and smaller left to right changes are resulting in greater and greater vertical changes. We can picture this easily enough with something like Desmos, letting us look at the graph as we space two points one unit apart left to right. When I'm way out here to the right, you can see that the Y value on those points, or maybe you have trouble seeing, but there you go, like one and 0.5 here, just aren't that far apart. But as I move closer and closer to that intercept, you can see they're starting to spread out awfully quickly. Essentially what's going on is that we have some point really, really close to this asymptote. I don't know what the x value is, so 
we'll just call it question mark, that when you plug in that question mark gives you back 2022. And then when we increase that by one, meaning we move just one unit to the right, you can see, well, of course, it's gonna drop way far down on the actual function because we must have been so close to the asymptote to get a huge value like 2022 out of that rational function. Now, the next thing that this makes me wonder is, is there any way that I can adjust these two points so that it is possible to get them to be one unit apart vertically at the same time that they're one unit apart horizontally. I can see if both of the points are on the same side of the asymptote, this will never be the case. I might have a point where I'm one unit apart left to right and then one unit down vertically, because on both sides of this curve, I can see its value is always decreasing. But the only way that I could get it to be one unit apart, both left and right and up and down, is if somehow I found like a perfect pair of points across the asymptote. Now looking at the graph right now, it doesn't seem like that's possible, but let's quickly investigate it algebraically and see if we can prove that it's not possible. Essentially what we want to know is, there any pairing one over x plus c that's equal to c such that when I add one to that denominator portion, I also add one to its actual value. This is a system of two equations in two variables, so it's at least possible that we'll be able to solve this uniquely. What I would do to begin is I would multiply both sides of this first equation by x plus c, which would give us one equals c times x plus c, or if we prefer, one equals cx plus c squared after we distribute that c. And then I'm gonna do something similar for the second equation, multiplying by x plus c plus one on both sides of the equal sign. Now this time I'm going to distribute the c plus one all together. So that gives me one equals c plus one times x, that's my first distribution, and then c plus one times itself, and hopefully you can see that's why I chose to distribute c plus one. As we complete the different distributions here, that's going to give us one equals cx plus x plus c squared plus two c plus one, which would be the expansion of c plus one times c plus one. I noticed something interesting here. The first equation was one equals cx plus c squared, and we have all of that in this second equation. If we subtracted the two equations, that means that all that stuff would go away and we would be left with this relationship. Zero equals x plus two c plus one, which is another way of saying x is equal to negative two c minus one. The reason that's useful to me is I can now plug that back into our first equation and get an equation totally in terms of c. And so let's bring that over here. One equals c times not x anymore, but what we know x is equal to, negative two c minus one, plus of course c squared. And then again, a little bit of distribution gives us one equals negative two c squared minus c plus c squared, which finally, if we added everything over, got a zero on one side of this equation, would give us back positive c squared plus c plus one equals zero. We should be able to get two points on those two opposite ends of the curve, one unit apart vertically and one unit apart left and right, increasing by one anywhere that this equation c squared plus c plus one has a solution. If we do some quick quadratic formulizing, we get negative one plus or minus the square root of one minus four all divided by two. And so right away I can tell, wait, square root of one minus four this is a complex solution. This is actually one plus or minus i root three over two, and so that tells me no. In the real coordinate plane, I will not be able to observe two points where I am moving one unit to the right and where my result is then one unit higher. So there you have it, a little exploration for the new year, fun little problem. I hope you liked that. If so, I would love to have you stick around with the channel, subscribe, I do problems like this occasionally. If there's a problem you would like me to tackle, put it in the comments down below. If there's an extension of this exercise, I should think of one to give you. I guess one easy extension would be this. Although there are no pairs of points where we move one unit to the right and one unit up for the value, I believe there should be two pairs of points where we move one unit to the right and one unit down. So if you wanna solve that or tell me how to solve that, throw that in the comments down below. And otherwise I will see y'all 
next time.